Right guys, I'm back for another video. Now, today we're going to be going through the Newport County 2019-2020 squad. Now, as you can see, there are some players that are not in it. Um, the likes of Danny McNamara, uh, Taylor Maloney. If there's any others, please let me know in the comments. But I'm going to be going through the um, squad and just um, rating them. So we've got player of the season contender. I think there's only a couple that are actually going to go in here. And then we've got very good average disappointing and poor um, like I said this is my opinion don't be um, offended by um, what I put in here because this is purely my opinion from what I've seen this season and um, obviously make sure you do let me know in the comments what ones you would change just so I know so I can get a better understanding on what on what people think so we're gonna go for this in kit number order so first of all we're going to go for Tom King. Now I'm going to put Tom King into average. Now this could get criticised a lot this decision but I don't think Tom King has done superbly this season. Um, he, he's made some errors but then again he's made some brilliant saves or he's had some brilliant moments where have, where have contradicted those errors. So I'm going to put Tom King into average. Now we're going to go for Daniel Ledbetter. Now I think Daniel Ledbetter has to go into disappointing. I think if he played more, um, maybe he could boost up to average if there was more good than bad. But he's been injured pretty much all of the season. And when he has played, he hasn't played that good at all. So um, I'm going to put Daniel Ledbetter into disappointing. Now Ryan Haynes. Um, I'm going to put Ryan Haynes into average. Now, there is um, controversy. Yeah. Well, there's, this is probably one of the most controversial decisions I'm going to be making. Now, because um, Ryan Haynes had a blitzing start to the season, scored at Forest Green, played play brilliant on that left-hand side, and he, he, he started the season as one of our best players. But since then, he's just dropped off, and there hasn't been that much end product from uh, Ryan Haynes. So unfortunately, I am going to have to put him into average. But if it was based on the first part of the season, it would be very good or potentially even player of the season contender. Right, Joss Labadee. Um, again, I'm going to go with... No, I'm going to go with very good for Joss Labadee. I think it has been a very successful season for him. He gives 110% every single game. And he most, most games, he comes out with a 7 or an 8. Um, that's why I think Joss Labadee is one of our best players in terms of performers. Um, like I said, I could get criticised a lot for saying that, but I think Joss Labadee is in there as one of the best. Kyle Hawkins. I'm going to put Kyle Hawkins in average again. A um, couple of standout games, like I said, with Ryan Haynes at the start of the season. But since then, it hasn't been amazing from Hawkins because I'm obviously in the play of the conceit, player of the tender, player of the season contender that has to be 9.5 10 have an amazing game pretty much every every game or or, tr or basically be the best player on the field every single game now unfortunately that is not the case with Kyle Hawkins I mean he's had a couple of good games but overall it's not amazing um, so yeah I am going to put Kyle Hawkins into average moving on to Dale Gorman now, I'm going to put Dale Gorman in very good because when he's played, he has played brilliant. Um, of course, he's never going to go in play of the season contender because he, he hasn't been here long enough. He's only been here since January. But that game against Morecambe, when he scored the goal, he was class. He was untouchable that game. And, um, and to back that, he has played very well this season for us. So I'm going to put Dale Gorman into very good. Robbie Wilmot. I'm going to put Robbie Wilmot into poor. Um... It's quite controversial. Um, a lot of pe a lot of people really love Robbie Wilmot, and I know Luke Jones um, loves Robbie Wilmot so much. So um, quick shout out to him. But um, but yeah, I think he has been poor this season, and I think he could agree with that as well. Um, and I think a lot of players, a lot of players in here could be put higher or lower. But um, yeah, I think Robbie Wilmot has to be in poor. Matty Dolan. Uh, Matty Dolan is going to go into disappointing. Um, what we wanted from Matty Dolan, we haven't got this season. We wanted that tenacious midfielder, which is someone I'll get onto in a minute. Um, we wanted that uh, from Matty Dolan, but we haven't really got it. We, we've got a lot from Matt Dolan this season, but it just hasn't been 
the same level of what Ryan Haynes or Kyle Hawkins or Tom King has given us, and he's definitely haven't given us as much as Dale Gorman or Josh Labadee. Right, Podrick Amond, very good. I think, again, he has had another um, another brilliant season for us. Top scorer as well. Uh, bags the goals in for us. And he, he, he does track back a lot as well, which I really like. But sometimes we just want him to be up there in the number nine position, banging in the goals. But he does show that ability that he can drop back and, and help link the play from that uh, number nine position. Right, Josh Sheehan. Josh Sheehan goes into the player of the, con- player of the season contender for me. An absolute dynamite of a player. He is quality. He's, he's brilliant on the ball. Um, his recovery is brilliant. He, he picks the ball up from the likes of Labadee and Bennett in midfield. Drives us forward. And his initial his initial thought is, can I bring this ball forward? Can I play the ball forward? If he can't play the ball forward, then he'll look either side. He really passes back Josh Sheehan. And I think having that um, technical brain, that football brain that he has... It is gonna it's gonna make him go a long way in his career. I think he, he could he could easily play at the championship level, in my opinion. Right, Jamil Matt. I'm gonna put Jamil Matt in average. Again, he's not been disappointing. I think he scored goals, and that's the most important thing. But it's so annoying that the style of football we play, and it doesn't get him into the game as much as it really should. I mean, we lump the ball up towards him, um, and and it's just no point because he's not gonna win it when he gets bundled to the ground. And so I don't see the point in playing that um, long ball up towards him because it just doesn't work. So I'm going to put him into average. Ash Baker. Um, oh, I'm going to have to put disappointing. I think if he played, if he would have played more, I could have put him into average. But when he played, he wasn't the best player on the field. But he wasn't. He wasn't absolutely awful. It was just. But he hasn't played enough to go into average. So I am going to put Ash Baker into um, disappointing. It's quite funny that though, isn't it? How both right both right backs are in disappointing, and we always get targeted down the right hand side. You know, funny that. Uh, Tristan Abrahams. I'm going to put him into average. Yeah, I was going to put very good, but he hasn't been that good to play uh, to go into the very good. But he's a brilliant impact sub, Tristan Abrahams. Bring him off the bench when you're one 0 down or it's one one, and you need that extra bit of energy and pace and and he can hurt teams and that that's the brilliant thing about Tristan Abrahams is the ability to hurt teams and and really stamp sort of, some sort of authority on a game if we're 1-0 down or it's one all uh, and bring him on just to just to run the show sort of thing. Right, George Nurse. Again, I'm gonna put George Nurse into average. The same reason with um Ryan Haynes. I think they both started the season really well. Um but Nurse is just sort of died down a little bit. That screamer he scored against Carlisle is an absolute banger. Um, I'll always remember him for that goal. I think he will go back to Bristol. I don't think he'll uh, come back, to be honest. I think his time at Newport is done now. Um, Scott Bennett. I'm going to put Scott Bennett into very good. Now, there's only two players that are actually going into play of the season contender. And I think Scott Bennett was lit. is literally on the on the brink of getting into that. He is so close it in to get into that level. I think if he would have maybe oh, I, I literally can't say any words because Scott Bennett has played absolutely fantastic this season. Maybe if he had that little that extra yard of pace to, to carry the ball a little bit better, but then he still does carry the ball. Um it is slight margins why he's not gone in there, but the two players that are in there have been flawless this season. So Scott Bennett is going in very good. Corey Whiteley. I'm going to put Corey Whiteley into disappointing. I think, again, the same reason to Ash Baker. If he would have played more games, he would definitely be an average, but you just can't put him in average along along these players that have played um, quite a huge number of games, to be honest. Lewis Collins. Now, Lewis Collins, I'm going to put in very good. Now, hear me out. Lewis Collins is a youngster. He's been thrown in when we've needed a little bit of energy, a little bit of that attacking, attacking mentality and he's been put in and he's done well he's been played out wide, he's been played through the middle he's been played behind the striker um, so it's very hard for him to, to sort of adjust when being played in different roles but I am going to put uh, Collins in very good because I think if he has if he has a full season 
um, getting you know maybe 20, 30 games under his belt, he could easily be one of our best players. But because he, he has to grow into that role and he has to find a role that he's best in. Right, Billy Waters, I'm going to put in poor, um, and I'm going to put Dominic Poli on in poor as well. I'll, I'll explain both of these in in the same sort of context because um, they just they just can't score a goal and they're forwards. I mean, we won 7-4 against Cheltenham, seven goals, and Polion didn't score one of them, and he was the striker that day. So, yeah, I mean, you can't really go off that. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that's the reason, but I just don't think he's good enough. And uh, the same with Billy Waters. I think he's more of a wide player. Um, he's not a striker because he's not physical enough. He's not quick enough, maybe. Yeah, he's just not a striker for me, personally, and they're both poor, and I hope... Um, well, we might need everyone to stay who's going to stay at the moment because we need players. Right, Mark O'Brien, I'm going to go with average as well. I'm not going to put him in very good just because of the specific reason that a lot of players, a lot of people probably would. I think he's been good, but he's not been perfect. And I think the players in very good, pretty much all of them have been brilliant when they've played. And, um, you know, I'm not going to put him in there just because he's retired now and he's, he's a club legend, because he is a club legend. But um, he, he's close to being in very good but I think maybe a little bit of inconsistency and a bit of liability pushes him down to average in my opinion Ryan Innes right Ryan Innes is going to go into I'm, I'm in an hour in he's going to go into average because I'm not sure um, the same reason with Mark O'Brien he has that little bit of liability and inconsistency but apart from that he can play the ball out he can head the ball um, he's very physical as well, so he can beat off a def uh, beat off a striker. Sorry, he's good in both boxes. So um, and he's had a pretty, pretty uh, he's had quite a pretty season for us. And yeah, I'd put Ryan Innes in average. Not been amazing, but he's definitely not been poor. Right, Mickey Dimitrio. Mickey Dimitrio is going into Player of the Season contender. Um, I literally have no words for this. This play is absolutely sensational. Gives 195% every single week. Like I was saying about um, Josh Sheehan, he comes out of he comes out of every game as one of the best players on the field, and it's it's no it's no um, surprise that that's that's the case every single game because the effort he puts in, um, the blocks he makes, the the tackles he makes, the interceptions he makes, the breaking up the play, that long ball down the left hand side as well that he does quite often in towards um, in towards the likes of Jimmy Matt and Podrick Amond. I love that so much. So, so I think, I think that does definitely put him in the upper regions of the team. And I think him and Josh Sheehan uh, fighting for that player of the season contender, in my opinion. Right, Dom Jeffries, I'm going to put into average. When he was when he played, he was all right. I remember that one game away at uh, Malden and Tiptree played brilliant in that game, and and he was probably my man of the match. I know Ammon scored the goal, but it was it was very last minute. For Ammon's goal, and I quite like Jeffries. I'm really gutted about him leaving, but you know we have to build and we have to go again. But I think Dom Jeffries is close to being in very good, but the, he didn't play that many games, and when he played, he wasn't perfect. Nick Townsend. I'm going to put Nick Townsend into the same category as Tom King. Now that is very controversial because everyone says Townsend actually is better. But, you know, Tom King's our number one. He's Wales' is number three or four. Um, and I think Nick Townsend is starting to grow into the role of, of being a second choice. And I think he could end up pushing um, Tom King all the way, um, if I'm honest. But, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting season uh, next year to see which um, goalkeeper gets the nod. I think it probably will be Tom King, but I wouldn't be too annoyed or too frustrated or too surprised if it was... Nick Townsend, right, Jordan Green, um, an absolute quality player, he is absolutely sensational, when we had him before, it was, mm, he's not that, he, he's good, but he, he just has to have that end product and he'll be a proper player, he's come back two years later and he does have that end product and he is still rapid and, um, you know, he's played very well this season since we've had him, I would have loved us to, to get him at the start of the season, I think we would have been in a much better position with him at the start, but you know he, he is a he is a quality player, Josh, uh, Jordan Green, and there's no chance that we're going to have him back. Bandley are going to snap snap that snap uh, everyone's hand off because uh, Jordan Green is definitely one of their better players going into League One. 
And I think he is League One level. I think he's League One ready as well. So Jordan Green in very good. Right, oh, it's Can. I'm going to put into disappointing. Um, I think it is just not. He is just not good enough. Um, he played amazing when he was at Mansfield. He actually scored twice against us, I believe. Um, and he, you, you can see signs of him progressing and being as that that good player that he can be. It's just I don't think he's good enough to be the, the type of player that we want in our system. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put Otis Khan in disappointing. So there we are, guys. That is my 2019-2020 Newport County tier list. Feel free to um, let me know in the comments what you would change. Also, make sure to like, uh, subscribe, and share the video out. Um, on the road to 500 subscribers. Well, on the road to 400 before that, but target of 500 by the end of the year. Thank you all, guys, for watching, and as always, up the county.